thanks everyone for coming to hear Helen Basilikas and Max Fordham speak today. Uh, this is going to be an informal conversation um, and a discovery into some memories and some vignettes mm. um, of two long-standing Camdenites, um, both who are incredibly influential as personalities, um, as doers, thinkers, and makers within the, their social communities, the Camden community, um, and of course the built environment. Helen, uh, who took her first steps off Dean Street in Soho. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Helen. Thank you. She is a, an incredibly wonderful personality, a grandmother and an anchor to the Cypriot community. Um, she's known for many things, including some of the culinary tastes that we as Londoners know today. But not only is she known for her um, flavorful and rich storytelling, oh. um, but she has a fervor for cooking and... Um, and your food is well known and famous throughout London um, by nature of her, um, of her restaurant that she started with her husband. And Max, welcome Max. Hello. Max, uh, born Thank in 1933 in, uh, in <laughs> London, and as we discovered, just like my father, um, has persevered uh, the great smug, um, London job losses, the, uh, <laughs> the, the blackness and the dirtiness of London and the, and the effects of the Great Depression on the youth of London, only to become a formidable force um, in uh, innovation and progressive thinking in engineering, um, as well as sustainable environments. Wow. Um, <laughs> but he didn't know that. <laughs> um, Max set up his practice, Max Fordham mm. LLP, and mm. the award-winning practice, and Max today, um, are both cutting edge um, and avant-garde in their craft as designers and thinkers. So two incredibly amazing and cool people to be talking with um, today. Thank so, you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wonderful introduction. We're going to keep it casual. We're going to keep it very loose. Uh, it's really about your guys' stories. And as I said to you, I'm here to, to eavesdrop as if I was sitting in your restaurant and listening to two two interesting mm. people have a conversation. Mm. Um, the two of them have crossed paths before, but not necessarily knowing that. Yes. Although uh, Helen did mention that she recognizes Max's face as being one of the- Unforgettable. Unforgettable. <laughs> one of those socialites um, in, in the hotbed of her, of, um, of her restaurant. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, let, should we kick off? So how and when should we start with Helen? How and when did you get to Camden? And then Max, you can you can interrupt whenever you want. <laughs> okay. well, I, I, Camden's it's two stages of my life really. So 1940s, um, when my parents came here, uh, and he, my father, had started a grocery shop with my mother's brother, with my uncle. Just after the war, they were demobbed. Um, they'd served in Italy, demobbed, started this grocery shop called Ivy Stores on Camden High Street, Mornington Crescent End. So that was my first phase. Uh, and then the second phase was 74. You went back to Cyprus I went, well, I was born here. I was born here, so um, I was mm. born in Petersfield. Uh, but when Society got married with a Cypriot from Famagusta and lived there from 64 to 74 when Turkey invaded and literally arrived back in, in London with, with absolutely nothing to the, to the extent that uh, we were even borrowing money from our, or taking money from my mother or father to buy our cigarettes because we were smoking like chimneys mm. and um, you know, wondering, should I give the change back or should I keep? <laughs> what does one do in those circumstances? So yes, uh, that's when we, Camden, Monitoring Crescent at that particular period, 74, it was going, London generally, I think, Max, it was general, wasn't it? The depression in 74? That's certainly the depression that caused us to move out of Albert Street and into Camden Square. Right. <laughs> right. What was your genesis to getting to Camden, Max? Well, I mean, my, my family kind of lived in Hertfordshire. And then I had a grandfather who was a piece of no good, really. I used to call him um, a dilettante, and my father got very angry about that. 
but, but he did blew all the family money and left uh, my father with having to pull, pull himself together. So he became a psychiatrist and finished up during the war <coughs> helping with um, children who'd been evacuated out of London and into Nottingham. And then just at the end of the war in 1944, he came back to live in London. And I'd been evacuated to Jamaica in order to keep me safe. And it kept me so safe that on the way home, my mother was torpedoed and killed. So I went to live with my father. And um, that was when I was 11, I arrived back in England. And so I was then embedded in Camden, except that in fact, as I was born in Highgate, and as a child, uh, my parents had a house in, um, oh, sort of, I've forgotten now, towards Swiss Cottage, anyway. And, um, and, then, <coughs> and then they lived in Park Hill Road and Haverstock Hill. I live there before now. The war. You live there in, in Park, Park Hill Road? Road. <laughs> <laughs> well, this the has house... been happening all the time. <laughs> <laughs> The house that my mother had what number? <laughs> was, was right at the end, again, at the, on the uphill side of Park Hill Road, uh, towards Haverstock Hill, and, uh, right at the end. And I was housed in the garage <laughs> and given a little um, a hood so that when I was being carried over to the garage from the flat, um, I could be nice and warm and cosy before I was secure and away from my mother's goings on. Um, <clears throat> so that was all kind of before, before the war, and then came back in 1944 to London, and the house had, all the windows had been blown out by a doodlebug, which destroyed the hospital in Regent's Park. There was a hospital there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the windows were all made good with plastic, um, with reinforced wires, strings mm -hmm. through the plastic. And of course, the plastics were pretty hopeless then, but I think it was probably cellophane. You know. and, um, and we used to go, we had a, a, a there was a coal ration. Yes. And I had to make up the fire so that the coal ration would last and learned the technique of making the fire burn very slowly, giving off a green smoke about like mucus which came out of all the chimneys. You could see the chimneys exuding this green mm. stuff um, when bicycling. And you did that then, and you looked at your fingernails, and they were mm. just full of grit and, and we, we used to wear petticoats at that period. <laughs> <laughs> Little white petticoats. Right. And, and, and the edges of the hems would, get, would be would, absolutely black by yes. the time you got back home. That's right. And yes. then when you read now about how terrible the pollution is in London, you think, oh, yeah. God, why Nothing don't those people can... grow up? <laughs> <laughs> you were talking earlier about, about how dirty Camden was mm. around the 70s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, right. As yeah. part of the depression. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and how that perhaps affected your impression yeah. of where you were staying yes. at the time. Yes, because oh. it wasn't through choice that I came back. It was because we had lost everything and we were thrown out of, of, of Famagusta. Um, and my father's grocery shop, that, which had been a booming business earlier with all the, the Cypriot community living here from the 50s. They'd moved from Soho into Camden. This was the one on the High Street. That's right. Um, it, had, uh, it was booming. They'd be, I'd be working there on weekends away from, you know, during the holidays when I wasn't at boarding school. And, um, just an amazing place where people met and exchanged news and what have you. And then in the 70s, when I came back to England, it was absolutely dead, no business. He, my father was trying to sell it to come to Cyprus, but that was <laughs> now <laughs> finished over. And um, boarded up, remember all the windows were boarded up specifically in Mornington Crescent area because there was, the shops weren't working. There was Alfred Kemp next door to us at the time, which sold second-hand oh, yes. right. second mm -hmm. uh, suits. <clears throat> um, so, and people, when we started the restaurant, you could see people were, this is the thing that's changed very much in Camden. People were not used to eating in restaurants. 
so that it was something strange that this was a restaurant restaurant. People would look into the window and, mm. Mm. and, and wonder what was going on, on there. Um, and we introduced, at the time, we introduced Meze. This which is the was, restaurant that you had now set up. With yes, your from husband. the Ivers. Am I jumping ahead? And no, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's completely okay. right. um, And we uh, started the Meze, uh, which had existed in one or two restaurants, Greek restaurants that were there at the time or were, were around. Mm. Uh, but the, the Cypriots knew how to go in and say, oh, I want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It wasn't set as a mezze. So um, that was something that we you know, introduced into, the, into, into London, I think, generally. It's very funny about the recession, because in a way, I mean, I started as a practice in 1966, and then, and had bought a house with a friend in London in 1958. And that was very low price. Yes. It was a very low price. And <clears throat> we then worked through the economy. And the recession, which I've already alluded to in 1974, yeah. uh, actually enabled us to buy a hu the house which we now live in, which is much too grand, really, for us, but very nice. And in a way, you look at those, the recessions, that have certainly influenced the business, yeah. business strategy strategy, but they, they just seem to be rolling along. And I don't perceive any recessions in quite the cataclysmic way of, as you've just described them. And, it, that, and that, must, that must affect the way you run the businesses. But, but on the other hand, the downturn in the business certainly sharpens your pens up a bit, doesn't it? You know, you think, Absolutely. what are we going to do next? Cool, blimey. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, both, you both mentioned that you came to Camden because at the time the, it was the cheap place. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Max, you were saying mm. that you mm. stuck a pencil in the, or a pen in the middle of London, you drew a circle, and, and the closest place at the cheapest rent was... Yes, was I mean, we plotted the prices. It was Camden. It was, yeah, Ca was Camden. Camden. Yeah. And yes. from your yeah. case, you were originally in Soho. Well, we in were Soho, Soho and <coughs> family, and, and, but slightly different mm. in that we lived in Soho. They came and lived in a room, like whole families in one mm. room. And then as they got their jobs going mm. or whatever, they oh. moved to Camden, where it was cheaper for them to buy either a little shop right. or a little flat or a two, to live in two rooms rather than one room. And so... What was it like socially to live in Camden at that time? I mean, uh, Helen, you were telling me before about this in incredible group of people who were living in this building. Oh, right. In, in, including an interesting next-door neighbour yes. who, who maybe you should tell us about. Yes, I mean, that was, that was with my... to begin with, with mm. my uncle, my mother's brother, who had got demobbed and started, what they started was a lorry, actually. They managed to buy a lorry <laughs> that, that um, went to Covent Garden mm. and then went into the Italian and French restaurants in Soho and sold, sold you know, the tomatoes and cucumbers. Um, and from oh, there, nice. they um, managed mm. to get in Plenda Street, probably the first Cypriot um, grocery shop in Camden. Um, and um, he had nine children, of which um, what is it, eight of them were in cottage, what they called cottage... Um, cottage homes. Cottage homes, yeah. yes, mm. which was like taking mm. children into care, and the youngest lived with them. And then when they managed to get their, their shop, they lived above the shop and all the children came, came uh, back in. Is that, is that the...? Uh, I was mm. thinking about the prostitute. Oh, not <laughs> I, I, I didn't just make that up. It's a true story. This was our home. <laughs> Even better. This was our home. Um, uh, my mother, actually, my mother was making parachutes as well during the mm -hmm. war. I forgot to, to say this. This was her, her job, making parachutes during the war and waitressing in the evenings. And uh, managed to get this home with my father. And... Um, 
we lived above and underneath was a, a place that sold chickens, you know, chicken meat and odds mm. and ends like that. Uh, it, everything on ration, mm. of course, at the time. And the back tiny little room, just cut off with curtains, was used by, by um, a prostitute. So uh, we, were look, we played in the streets and were looked after by the prostitutes who used to stand in the streets because it, it was, mm. it, it was mm. you know, that, that's how everybody was. And we really were looked after them. If anything happened to us or somebody was being a bully or what have you, you know, they, we'd get told off by the various prostitutes that uh, all looked after that were in the area. And yeah. Max, what, what would you say are well. uh, one of your fondest, earliest memories of Camden? Well, there was, I mean, there was a time when we moved into a house in Regent's Park Road. Yes. And a whole group of us went and looked at the house. That was when we were a group going to buy a house. And they said, oh, that's awfully gloomy. Why don't we look around somewhere else? So we did look around somewhere else and kept putting in offers for houses. And after a year, we went back and offered 250 pounds less for the house that we'd been to look at. Really? And, so, and got it for the price. So it had, yeah. the price had been stable for a yes. year. Mm -hmm. And then when we were there, I got groups of friends to come along and help with working on my basement flat. And my wife turned up, she's now my wife, and uh, she tried to find a flat in the neighborhood. And she couldn't find a flat which had a lavatory. They were outside. Yep. That's yes, right. Yes, Absolutely. I can remember that. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we moved on, we moved to a house in Albert Street, number 22 Albert Street, which was a five-story house with three rooms of floor. And we, nev we never, I mean, it was vacant when we looked round it. But every floor under the place where the beds would be had a hole in the boards, which had obviously been worn by the legs of the beds. Yeah. And the, the rumor was that it, that had been a brothel. And that, that, was, <laughs> <You> <laughs> and that the, the beds had had plenty of exercise yeah. and worn holes in the yeah. floor. Yeah. I don't yeah. know about that. But certainly, there was only one lavatory in that house. And there was a basin on the third floor on the staircase, on the winders of the staircase, tucked into a corner, there was a basin. Yeah. And that was how that was how people were living, which is the kind of overcrowding yeah. which yes. we all think is so appalling. Yeah. But it is actually what happens in every major town which is economically vibrant. You know, the people are attracted in and there's nowhere to live and they don't have any wages and there's no work. Yeah. And <clears throat> and they are going to compete for the work, which lowers the, the wages and uh, so they're overcrowded. Yes. And we all throw up our hands in horror about that and say how disgusting it is. People have a right to this, that, or the other. And I must say, when people start getting and talking about rights, I turn my back on them. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because I think it's a really, it's so difficult to look at the evolution of society and say, and, and apply theories to it. I mean, it, it all, Everything really just evolves and grows, yes, doesn't it? Absolutely. And so Camden, you can see it evolving from having been. I mean, we're looking at it as though as from an, a position of looking at it as impoverished. But I'm quite sure if somebody had gone who'd lived there in 1920, they wouldn't have said it was yeah. impoverished. They would have said, "Whoa, yes." But there was a so, there was a social aspect to it as well. You had your community, and right, and you had yeah. your restaurant, and there was it was this hotbed for socialites and will self yep. and politicians. And Max, you were saying mm. that mm. Camden at the time was the highest concentration of architectural offices yes, that was in one yes. borough in the yeah. world. Yeah. And so there mm. were there were these mm. people who were incredibly mm. social. They were thinkers and they were doers. Yeah. Yeah. What was the that, social context I like? Because that, that's obviously what kept you there. Yes, I think oh, yes. it wasn't. Didn't that start in the seventies? Because prior to that. It, it oh, wasn't no. so much. Did it start earlier? Oh, no. Oh, yes, there we had all the pet artists. No, well, and the, the, the no, some of the houses in Gloucester Crescent. Yes, I absolutely. Mean, I know who yes. bought them, you know, and, and yeah. they, were, they were being bought. I mean, by 1948, yeah. 50, there were people yeah. choosing to go there. Yes. And, um, and then 
the Beyond the Fringe group pretty much all went there. Yes. Jonathan Miller, yes. uh, Alan Bennett, I think actually only two of them went there. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but it was, I mean, that was all building yes. up then. Yes. And, um, and the polit politicians, I mean, like in my restaurant, we've, I've had Blair and Jack Straw and right. that yes, group of that people group. who would come. Um, Lloyd Webber, okay, I mean, it was, yes. it, it, was it was every, it was Ursula every Vaughan, type. Vaughan Williams was there? Yes. I think. Yes. yes. I think. Yes. I don't know. No, no. Know. Was, <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't, I mean, when I was at university, I thought I was going to write an intellectual magazine that was going to be like Encounter. Yes. And there was a group of us who met regularly and discussed what was going to be in this magazine, but actually it never proceeded beyond the talk phase. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that, 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 they, those people all came and lived in Camden, I think. Yes. Michael Frayn was here. Yes. And, and, um, and there still what, are. Are, are they not all the, the newer, Turbin. the newer celebrities, or newer actors, or newer? Well, they definitely like Primrose Hills. So that's yes. so they're definitely around. But that's yes. a strange. Primrose Hill is a strange. I lived in Primrose Hill twenty years actually in a tiny little flat. But yes. It's a yes. strange little enclave all this. Ah, well, Primrose it's bounded, Hill. isn't it, by the park on one hand and by the railway on the other. And, um, and by the slums of Camden Town, mm -hmm. on the, yes. as it were, the rest. Yeah. So that it, it is a very tight little enclave. Yes. And you, you, you know, you could see, I mean, that's the middle of where we bought our first house as a group. <coughs> and then all those little alleys down the back immediately shot up in value. And, yes. and people painted them and, and, uh, and lived nice lives. So, I mean, we move, we move to places because mm. perhaps they're cheaper rent, but we also move to places because there's communities there that keep us sane, keep us strong, help you build memories, yes. which are the reasons, mm. why, and in families, yeah. which are the reasons why you integrate or you put your roots down in the community, in, into a, an area like yes. Camden. So, I mean, yes. Helen, how important, yes. for example, is you, you, you spoke about the Jewish communities, which were these yeah. outsider communities, yeah. the Cypriot communities, mm. the Turkish Cypriot communities. Yeah. How important were they in terms of establishing Camden as a base for you? Because you, both of you haven't left, so there was... It wasn't the be-all. And it wasn't the no. greatest no, context no, 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 to live no, no. in, but there were things that no. were... It wasn't the be-all, but it was, it was the main, I think, the main reason for the continuation of, a, of my family, anyway, living in, living in Camden. Um, and because there was the problem also of, um, actually I didn't, I got very angry once with um, a Radio Times article, this is in the 19, <laughs> 1980s, yes it was, late 1980s, and it was a very long article mm. with Judy Dench, who happens also mm. to be a, a mm. Camdenite, uh, saying what a wonderful holiday she'd had in the occupied area of Cyprus, calling the leader of the Turkish Cypriots the president of Cyprus, talking about swimming with her daughter, who was the same age as my son at the time. So all the life that I was not allowed to have, because I was not allowed to go and live mm. where, where I came from because of the Turkish army, um, she was living as a holiday and, and saying how wonderful it was. And I got really angry. And through that anger, um, I somehow thought I got more politically involved with the community here in London and then and the efforts to maybe connect back into Cyprus. So yes, Camden was a good place mm. to start that sort of thing because it was... Um, it, there was a large community of Cypriots still, much less than in the 60s, but mm. they, it, it, there still mm. was a large community. And um, we created the Camden Cypriot Festival, which... Yeah, we were talking about Yes. That. And actually, one mustn't forget the influence that Breakfast Television had when it came. It was like an injection of vigour really? well yes, to, yeah, yes, to Camden, yes. really. Yeah. And, um, it, uh, it was built on, on the site of the Henley's garage. Yes. And, uh, and we were, I mean, the whole, that whole thing 
when it happened, there was, um, oh, Terry Farrell had just split up from his uh, partner, Nick Grimshaw, mm -hmm. and I'd never understood quite how whatever held them together. <laughs> and then um, there was Ter Terry, and I thought, you know, how on earth is he? He hasn't got any fame. He hasn't done anything. He's just built a rather boring building in pa Paddington, very big, actually. And um, so what's going to happen to him? And then I happened to meet him, possibly at, even at Nantes, yes. but maybe yes. not, um, and said I thought that the Henley's garage overlooking yes. um, the canal was not occupied. And he said, oh, I see. Well, not long after that, he was designing breakfast yeah. television. With the egg cups. For the, the egg cup building. And that then led to a complete mm. upsurge mm. of restaurants mm. and, and activity to the whole of, I mean, it predated the, um, the market, I think. Yes. Which, which is another strong force a driver, mm. and it was driven by somebody who got hold of a whole lot of that area just north of the canal, I think, um, who was a psychologist or a doctor. Yes, Do you and know? I don't know. And I know, I know Cypret, who owns the strip of shops there that have the big, um, the big sort of kitschy statues hanging out, you know, shoes and, uh, oh, you know, the yes. ones? That, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Right. Would you say the market's yeah. been a positive driver for Canton? <laughs> I think it's a double-edged sword, or whatever the expression <laughs> is. Because <laughs> after all, it's driven the Inverness Street food market out of existence, I think, by, by competing with it. And, and that was a huge food. part of... Uh, and that was a huge yeah. part. Yes. 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 yes, absolutely, yes. yes. And yes. the grocery yes. stores were, yeah. were also there, along there. the street. Yeah, And yes. it, it, was, it was brilliant when it first started. I loved Camden Market when it just first started. Well, in 1880 or...? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean in the 70s. No, I mean in the, in the 70s. When, when you started having that couple of restaurants and the couple of stalls and things, but I think when it started to get mm -hmm. so big, I do think it did dis destroy a lot of other things around oh, it. Oh, that market? Yes, yes. the Camden yes, Market. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. So yeah. it was great to begin with. It was sad when they started <coughs> covering up the water actually by the lot to keep up, to put the stalls in. I felt yes. that was a bit yes. sad yes, yes. that you didn't have the water. But then it created, you know, the panks and the and the yeah, goths. Yeah, one thing we haven't spoken it was wonderful. about is that Camden's <laughs> also become <laughs> this sort of hotbed for expression of rebellious culture and alternative yeah. lifestyle. Uh, and music it. played a massive role in that. And the yes. spaces yes. in which music. Yes. Uh, was created um, really influenced the entire genre yes. as well, and and Camden is partly known for this. Mm. And that's culture. what started it, actually. I think there was um, uh, the the, uh, the the warehouse that was turned into a venue for dancing and playing music, and there was an architect called Ch Chassis who worked who worked on that and made it work, and. After that, I had become an old fogey by then and was thinking, oh, all this modern stuff, I don't really like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that, but there it is, you know, it's fantastically vigorous and has driven Camden along, I think, yes. and is going to keep on driving it, too, for quite a long yes, time, yes. isn't it? It's uh, going well, to I hope up. so. <laughs> I hope it evolves. And, um, yes. I, Helen, you were saying you're, you're almost blind affection for Camden, yes. you know, very maternal in some ways. Uh, Camden can do nothing mm -hmm. wrong as, as, as a child. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, even with the with this sort of legacy of these punks, which a lot of the outsider of London sees as a, as a negative, mm -hmm. as a sort of pejorative theme to put onto Camden. Mm -hmm. You never saw that affect Camden in any sort of bad way. It's only been a positive. No, I, mm -hmm. I thought it was positive. I, mm -hmm. I loved the colour that the punks brought in. And then let's say I loved the blacks that that the Goths brought in. It was it was just that right. youth mm. and rebellion, which which for me was uh, because I come from a culture that mm. doesn't rebel. You know, you have and you were old. Talking about the festival, which, we, yes. which I thought was actually really interesting as a as a outsider culture. This was your way of of 
saying this is who we are and this yes. is what we're here to do. Yes, mm -hmm. and we introduced, yeah, we introduced like Cypriot embroidery into the libraries that were viewed. Mm. We got Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots to, they wrote a pay about the turtles, which are um, mm. at risk of being extinct, which land in, in, in fact, and, and give birth on a, two beaches in Cyprus, which are very specific to keep the, these turtles uh, from going extinct. Mm. And Turkish Cypriot and Greek Cypriots together wrote a play and told the schools here in Camden, the primary schools, with this children's play. Oh. So, and jazz festival, we had jazz, uh, the jazz, um, sorry, what, the one that you've got your, for this festival, we've got a musical evening, the jazz cafe. The jazz, jazz cafe. We had three yeah. nights of bringing Cypriot music, Greek music, and Turkish music. So you had the three together with people coming and, and three nights and then really enjoying themselves together. Um, which was a wonderful way, I think you described it, as, as being rebellious, but without the violence. Yes. Or, yes. <laughs> well, I think there is, a, I mean, there is a thing about society, which is that, of course, people are sociable. So, society means social, social society. And so then the music and the arts are all part mm -hmm. of, the, of that aspect of society. But there is a slightly more serious and puritanical view of society, which is people actually making things that work you know, and getting on with it. And I'm just going to introduce engineering here, because after all, that's what happened to me. I became an engineer. And then the engineering worked in Camden because we could get that very cheap, uh, that very cheap office that we yes. got, you know, helped to make it work. And then the whole and the need and the need to find the right people and to keep them in the business without um, without allowing without money inflating the values that we were trying to generate and so turning it into a democracy. All of those things all were going on in Camden because it was possible and because also it was generated by the intellectual climate of the people who went and talked in the restaurants. Yes. You know, yes. that, there was that they, kind yes. of slightly yes. serious group. I mean, even the beyond the fringe people, yes. you could go and have supper with them and talk about the nature of democracy yes. and does God really exist and whatever you wanted to talk about. Because it was a very strong intellectual climate. Yes which existed in yes. Camden. Yes. Do you think and it's within still Europe, fringe still does. culture? Do you think it's still...? I, I think, I think it, yes. I think, I mean, it might have become more commercialised, less, less so intense. But yes, I, I okay, think... Okay. I forgot okay. to say yes. with the festivals yes. that we had Tracy Emin, because she's a Turkish Cypriot, she put up in the Crowndale Centre, mm -hmm which is a double sort of thing mm. like this, but vast. And she put up these very long panels of nude women. There were four of them. If you know mm. her sketches, you know, they're, they're mm. quite sexual. Mm. Mm. And these long... And the staff in Crowndale Centre complained that this was sexist. <laughs> and we had to bring them down. They refused <laughs> 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 to allow these Tracy Emin enormous, I mean, absolutely stunning. <laughs> So you rolled oh, them up, kept yeah. them under your bed. And no, I, I, wish I'd, I wish I'd managed to, to keep one of them. <laughs> but, but it's just amazing. But, but where one's being politically correct or blah, blah, mm. blah. Yeah. I mean, how, you know, <laughs> some of it's a bit too um, much. You, mm. both, you both established businesses here. Um, you both got mm. a lot of memories about Camden. So your roots are firmly, firmly established. And we were trying to identify right. earlier mm. Is it, a, is it a moment that happens that you decide I'm going to stay in Camden? Or is it that you, you land it up here and your roots grew without you even knowing about it? Mm. I Did think the roots grew without your realizing quite. I mean, to a certain extent, for a lot of people, obviously not for Helen, that you, you, your roots are defined by your parents and their parents. I mean, you do go, you know, Absolutely. That, and certainly I'm sure that in Cyprus, there are, there are families that are really rooted in Cyprus. Yeah. And then you get disastrous eruptions yeah. and have 
you know, yeah. and then where do you settle? And that is, yeah. must be the luck of the draw, I think. Yes. And I, I, in 74 when I came, I hated it because my life had been disrupted. Um, it was really tough surviving. It was a matter of surviving. I didn't want to be here. <laughs> I mm. hated Camden. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and after, you know, years, yes, I think to certain... We're both wondering mm -hmm. why the hell you're still here. Yeah, because, <laughs> because, because when I had the choice, which I didn't have in 74, I think because you mm. do evolve, because, yes, my son went to school here, so I couldn't yeah. go and... Yeah, right. But when I retired, and I could go anywhere, which was um, mm. literally four or five years ago when my husband, you know, we, we mm. worked, actually, it didn't, you know, so but four, four years ago, I could have retired. I bought a house in Park Hill Road. Well, mm. not a house, mm. a flat, it's mm. a flat. <clears throat> because I wanted to, I chose to, I didn't want, I suddenly realised this was my home. I didn't want to go and live anywhere else. I loved Camden. I loved, I think you talked about mm. the density. Yes. The yes. density Lovely. of it. And yeah. you're so right. It's yeah. the, it's, and there's so many social layers. Yes. Um, and then you have memories, don't you? I mean, well, I don't know how you do that. But I mean, I have memories of a woman who lived in Park Hill Road and wanted to adopt me. And then there was another woman who lived in the studios in Park Hill Road who also wanted to yes, adopt I me. Lived just, I and just, presumably just my mother was doing a pretty bad job. No, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but those memories, of course, are very linking. Yes. You know, and and uh, the house in near Swiss Cottage that I was, I mean, I think I left that when I was four. But I fell into the basement area there and cut my nose. Well, I can just see a scar. But that... It, it's almost a memory, because my first memory of my father is in the garden of that house. Mm. And so memories like that do, you, do link you into your place. Mm. And I've got a whole lot of, of um, well, a lot of family who have gone all over the world, last them. And, um, and then also my stepmother had two children who definitely anchored themselves in, in London yes. after that. And that, I think, was the difficulty of getting away from their, from their roots, which were pretty tenuous. Yes. So, they so, so in a way, mm. Camden was that like mm. a quiet introvert that you were put on a blind date with. And the more, <laughs> the more you spent time with this person, the more they opened up, and the more you were wound by the conversation and, and had a relationship with Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good up. analogy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if we could talk a little about mm. the future, we were saying that Camden got its battered when mm. its time was. Maybe that was in the late 50s and 60s, mm. and yep. then the Depression came. And um, Camden almost is at a stage now where it's getting another battered. It's, it's, it's no longer mm. really that fringe. People are moving east because mm. that's where the, the cheaper rent is. Mm. Mm. And we're at a point now where we're being... You know, we're being closed down by expensive neighbourhoods and so on. How do you mm. think Camden's going to change? What resilience do you think it's going to show that you've seen that hasn't changed in the years that you've been here? That a, it's, a it's a tough question because we're always talking about the future. Well, the worst you can say about it that, is that it'll become like Kensington, isn't it? I mean, and, and it could. But Primrose Hill is nearly there. Yes, but Primrose Hill is a special thing. Come on. <laughs> no, well, it's, it's too yeah. varied to yeah. end up like mm. Kensington. It's just too varied. The bits of all the different things that have happened mm. have remained. You know, you've remained. <laughs> and I'm, as an immigrant or refugee, yes. have remained. So bits of whatever life was in the past, Kensington didn't have that. Bits of it has remained here and will remain forevermore. Come on, well. we can't end, up, can't end up as Kensington. Do you think it will always be, always be edgy? Why not? In, in mm. maybe, in a, maybe in a different way. We, I mean, one has always had the successful intellectuals here as well as the unsuccessful intellectuals, mm. or the successful artists as well as the unsuccessful, or the successful writers as well as the unsuccessful. So, mm. yes, one, no. Do you think that the really penniless people who go and work in a garret can come to Camden now? No. 
They can't, can no, they? No, really? you're right. You're right. Would you I both bring think. up your families again in Kansas? Good question. That's a difficult question for me because I would prefer to be in Famagusta during the period <laughs> that I was bringing up my son because probably it would have been easier than, than trying to survive the business that you're open at for 14 hours a day every day as well as bringing up uh, a son. So, mm. Okay. <laughs> Max, what do you well, think? it's a it, really interesting question, that, because I think... Um, I think in the context of us, me and my wife, bringing up our children, we would persist here. But uh, there's, a, there's a sort of offshoot of that question, which is what about new people who join uh, the practice? I mean, the practice, definitely, it's much too possessive of me to describe it as a, my family. But nevertheless, I do feel that a bit. And so, the notion that people who come and work here in the practice can't live in Camden, mm. I think, is upsetting. Yes. It upsets me. But on the other hand, it's not, it's not too bad. I mean, there are certainly people come and initially manage to find flats. Mm -hmm. And then, then they move out. Well. It's really interesting because, the, in fact, the whole practice has developed a strategy of opening offices in other parts of England. And the reason for that strategy is primarily so that people with new families can go and work where it's economically easier and schools are easier, especially the schools are easier and better. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is... I mean, then that's an issue which describes partly what's happening in Camden now, yes. absolutely now, that young professionals are finding it difficult to carry on here. So Max that, and Helen, mm -hmm. um, we'll, clo we'll, we'll, we'll close, but okay. I, I, as a young Camdenite, maybe the best way to finish off is mm -hmm. to, to ask you, my, my future in Camden has started, right. and what would, what would you part ways with new Camdenites, people who have an affinity to Camden and see a future for it, what would you, what would you tell us? <laughs> well, <I'm laughs> no, I wouldn't, de actually I wouldn't give anybody advice, I think you should just live the way you, what happens to you, just let it happen. <laughs> you have to hope that you can ride the surf of the economy here. And if you if you can can main, maintain enough finance, enough money to stay in Camden, you want to. I think you should stay in the so centre of a town because that's where the density yeah. is, and where. And then you have to look for your friends, and I guess that your friends are around you anyway. And breaking that link is a very difficult link. And people who do that find it difficult, I think. I, had to, I don't know, because my, my, my youngest son has gone to live in Oxford because his wife is a don there. Um, and they, they're, making, they're making Oxford work for them pretty well, I think. Um, and you, and they're, not, they're not doing it in London. I suppose because the, 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 the academic links didn't open for them in London at the right time. I mean, that's really what... But I think you're right with, the, with the, the having friends around you. I, th I think the tragedy of my life, and it is a tragedy, is that as a married mm. person, my community was completely disturbed, dis mm. dis disrupted, Right. Um, yeah. Scattered all over the world, one's friends, one's relatives. It was. It just within a day was just dispersed. And then Camden has given you a home. And Camden, yes, <laughs> Camden, yes, Camden. Over the years, despite me hating it and not mm. being prepared to like mm. it, mm. over the years, because yes, mm. you've got your children's mm. 
parents, you know, mm. the, the parents of children that go to the same school as yours, the odd, you know, people coming into your life and eventually you've rebuilt your, your, your own community. Um, but that, right. so don't lose that. That's the only thing I can say. If, that, if Camden gives you that, don't lose it. Well, I know I've enjoyed uh, <laughs> getting little moments into, into you, your guys' past and your mind, and just seeing the relationship you guys have, having only met an, an hour ago. And yeah. Just, yes, just that you it was amazing. So yes, much in common. Amazing, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, and just through reminiscing about, about a similar upbringing and content. So thanks for sharing with, with all of us. Mm. I know that we've uh, that I've, I've certainly enjoyed it. Well, thank you. Nice. It's been really, really a pleasure being here. It's always such fun talking. It is. Yes. <laughs> thank you. The next time we'll do it at the restaurant. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.